Hi guys, I'm back! Um, and yes, clearly I've taken to singing my intro, so that's new. Oh, I haven't filmed a video on IBS for about a year, and that is because I got married. So myself and my now husband went to Antigua last September uh, with about 40-ish of our closest friends and family, and we got married. It was epic, it was pretty dramatic, so we had a couple of hurricanes while we were there. It was absolutely magical and everything that we had kind of hoped for and a hell of a lot more. But yeah, that's kind of been preoccupying me for a while, so I just hadn't got round to filming any videos and in the lead up to the wedding, my stomach was a bit all over the place, kind of stressed, nerves, you know, last minute bits and bobs going on. I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do with my YouTube channel. I have been so overwhelmed by the amount of comments and DMs and emails that you guys have kind of sent me saying how much my videos have helped you or how much you enjoy watching them um, and kind of just how it feels nice to know that you're not the only one who's got IBS because I think that's kind of a big thing and that is why I started talking about my IBS and my anxiety and everything that kind of comes with it because I kind of wanted everyone to know that this isn't just you going through it because IBS has a lovely way of making you feel really isolated because you tend to spend a lot more time than normal in the bathroom. Yep, you do. There was one particular comment that I received last night and it really just made me want to start and I thought god if I don't sit down and film something now who knows when the next time will come so kind of excuse the bunged up nose, the weird sounding voice, I've had a, a cold for a while, um, but I'm just going to do it, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to talk today about what it feels like for me when I have an IBS flare, I'm going to be super honest, the good, the bad and the ugly that comes with an IBS flare, and for me I feel like there are 10 stages and I'm just going to walk you through them, so let's get a crack in. I have made notes for this, which is why I might look down every now and then, just because, you know, I'm 31 now and my memory is nowhere near, well, I mean, it's never really been good, but yeah, I've got notes. For me, an IBS attack normally starts with the gurgles. You know what I'm talking about, a little gurgle, 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 yep, that's me doing a gurgle. Uh, followed by maybe a couple of growls, it's just my stomach's way of letting me know that something's about to happen. And then you know you get that sense of like, that, just that feeling that your stomach is physically dropping. And then obviously into stage two, the anxiety. Oh my god, am I near a toilet? Shit, I need to get myself near a toilet. Uh, if I'm on a train and there are no toilets, just sheer blind panic, like I start kind of sweating, I get heart palpitations, just you know the dread, like oh my god I need to go, I need to go now, where am I going to go? If I'm at work, not so bad, if I'm at my desk I can just run to the loo, if I'm in a meeting, mm, awkward, might have to excuse myself. Um, if I'm out in a public place, have I done my research beforehand, do I know where the nearest toilet is, can I just run into that bar over there and go? I've been in all of these situations and yeah, just sheer dread. And I kind of have to take deep breaths, know that I've got this. This has happened to me multiple times before. I can do this, just gotta find a loo. That kind of becomes like my main priority. And if I'm with somebody else who knows the deal with my stomach, I will look to them, I'll have like a pale white face, which is no different to normal really, um, and I'll be like, we've got to find a toilet, I need to go now, go, let's go, 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 help me. <laughs> oh god, actually, I remember, this is a funny story, uh, maybe, um, well now it is. On my Hindu, actually, we were going for a night out in London and um, I was super excited, didn't really know, I had no idea actually of what was being planned. We were in a cab on the way into town um, and I just remember my stomach, I think it's the anticipation of not knowing and surprises, so my stomach was a bit bubbly and I just remember suddenly feeling like I really needed to go. Um, but we were stuck in a lot of traffic and I didn't know when we'd get to the venue because I didn't know where we were going, so 
I remember saying to my friends in the cab driver, like, we've got to stop, I need to go, we need to find a toilet, I, I need to go. And then I remember dragging one of my friends, who also has IBS, uh, out the cab with me, riding into, I think we ended up in the Nando's, and I, sh I should say, I'm in full head-to-toe sequins, I've got, like, a bride headpiece veil on, um, <laughs> I've got glitter all over my face, and I remember going, I'm so sorry, but I really need to use your loo, and then running to the loo, um, oh god, yeah, code red. I was fine, but, yeah, ah. Uh. Now let's talk about those lovely stomach lumps. Um, for me, mine are immediate. They come on, um, if not just before, I'm going to have a flare-up, um, during the flare-up, and they will stay for the entire time and probably the day after. The only way I can describe what the stomach cramps feel like is if someone has got a knife or something, they've put it into your intestines and they're kind of like slowly twisting it round and round and round so that everything becomes knotted. It, I mean, they, they make you double over, I constantly cling on to my stomach, um, I'll have a hot water bottle clamped to my stomach, sometimes that doesn't really help. It's just an ache that is constantly, constantly there. During a flare, my stomach will also bloat up, so I look like maybe I'm six months pregnant. Um, to be fair, I think I have bloating maybe 90% of the time anyway, like six out of seven days or something. Um, but when I have a flare, it's it's more extreme. It's I've got a huge swollen stomach. It's kind of... It's swollen, but it's kind of hard, and it's painful, and I, I don't want any clothes that are like tight or restrictive. Um, I don't want anything that's got buttons on it or you know that digs in. I just my stomach needs to be able to like expand, and and I need clothes that kind of flow or ease over it, hiding it because nobody wants to be offered a seat on the train when they're not. At Actually pregnant do they although that has happened to me also I am all about those elasticated waists I mean I live in midi skirts because the waist is high and they're, they're pleats they'll hide everything um, and it's kind of easy and breezy but skinny jeans no no just no if I am wearing skinny jeans know that the button will be unpopped because <laughs> can't fit the stomach in that it's worth noting here that I suffer with IBSD, which is diarrhoea rather than constipation, which is IBSC. And for me, that means that my evacuations, I kind of really like that phrase, even though we're talking about poo. Um, well, it means that my movements are urgent, um, they're immediate, and sometimes they can be uncontrollable. Um, I don't always know when they're going to be, but I can kind of... I'm kind of good at knowing now because I, I, I kind of recognise the, the feeling that I get in my stomach. Um, but basically my stools will be loose, uh, there'll be a lot of liquid and I will kind of struggle with this sense of um, not being able to fully evacuate my bowels, TMI. And I know that when I have a flare I will have maybe two main waves of these movements, um, so it won't just be a go to the loo and it will be over kind of situation it will be go to the loo get out of the loo wait a while painfully for when it was going to happen again and, and sometimes that can be instant like i can come out of the bathroom and then be like oh christ gotta go again um or sometimes it can be a half an hour to an hour wait while my body kind of digests processes does whatever it needs to do um but yeah i mean with IBSD, I feel like there's always that sense of dread. So I kind of, I know that it's going to happen again, but I don't really know when or where it's going to happen again. Um, so what I tend to do is I always have some kind of reading material on my phone or just something in the bathroom to keep me entertained because I could be in there for a good while, doubled up in agony. So for me, those are the main stages of having an IBS flare. I'll get the gurgles, I'll be bloated, I'll get the stomach cramps, the sense of extreme urgency needing to go to the loo and evacuating. Um, but it doesn't stop there. There is so much more afterwards. Like, I suffer with extreme lethargy after I've had a flare. It literally leaves my body feeling so drained 
that I can't do anything. Um, if I'm at work and I've had a flare, I'll instantly have to go home. Um, if I'm already home, brilliant, because it will mean that I'll have a flare and I will go straight into bed, put my pyjamas on and just lie in bed with a hot water bottle just because I've got no energy to do anything else. Um, it takes everything out of me. I won't be hungry, um, won't really want any company, I don't want anything to kind of touch my stomach because it will still be feeling sensitive. I just need to kind of lay there and decompress. Also, after a flare, I find that I don't particularly have a big appetite. Um, I try to eat little and often, and I will eat things I know that don't irritate my stomach. I will play it super safe um, because I don't want to unsettle and upset everything so soon after just having a flare. I find that I will still have um, a stomach ache, but like a dull ache. Um, as I said before, I'll wear clothes that just don't dig into my body. Everything will be looser, it will be oversized, it might be some bars clothes. Um, anything to make me feel as comfortable as possible, especially if I have to then go out and do something or go back to work um, versus staying in my pyjamas at home. What I do really struggle with is just a sense of absolute defeat. My IBS has won again, especially because I am so careful with what I eat and my lifestyle and making sure I don't take too much on. I schedule in a lot of time for self-care. There are days when I won't leave the house at the weekend just because I'm trying to build my body back up. So when I do have an IBS flare, I just get really pissed off about it. Um, and I know that sometimes the situation is out of my control. Um, but yeah, it really sucks. And it does make you feel really isolated because although I have a super supportive husband and family and friends, you know, it's not, they don't know it as well as I do because they don't go through it. Um, that's why I feel like only really people with IBS can ever empathise with how you're feeling because <laughs> we've all been there no matter what type of IBS you have or what your symptoms are. And you know, the kicker for me is always the, just the disruption to my life. Um, I have missed quite a lot of things through my IBS I mean, I've missed dinners with friends, birthdays, weddings, day trips, family days, I, I don't know, I think my friends are probably quite used to the fact that I can't always make firm plans because I kind of don't know what, how I'm going to be feeling, what my stomach's doing, it kind of depends where we're going, what we're eating, what the deal is, I kind of have to do a lot of research before agreeing to something and also I just, I hate letting people down and with IBS you do because you can't always go wherever you're meant to go or see whoever you've agreed to see so you know Ugh. I can't always keep to my plans because sometimes I can't leave the bathroom so it can be pretty soul destroying but luckily my friends get it and they get it because I talk openly about it and I've told them I mean they all know about my IBS some of them have watched the videos you know they have been with me while I've been having flares or I've had to leave and go somewhere because I'm having a flare so they get it they get it and the more you tell people the more they'll get it too and there you have it that's the highs and the lows of having an IBS flare um from my point of view obviously because a flare could be different for anyone I think the key takeaway from my point of view and what I try to do it's just to kind of take care of yourself and, and really know and understand your body and listen to what it's telling you to do. If you feel drained and run down, have a rest day because that's clearly what your body needs. Um, and I think as I've got older, I've got way better at saying no to things that I don't want to do. Um, and I will just make that time to lie on the sofa and watch TV and just slob out because that is what I need to do um, but you know best you know your body better than anyone so if something doesn't feel right trust your gut oh trust your gut good one thank you so much for watching oh god I tell you what it feels good to be back if you guys have any things or any video content that you'd like to see from me if you've got any questions about IBS or things in particular that you'd like to see tips and tricks, more kind of embarrassing stories, I've got tons of them, um, let me know and I will film whatever you guys want. 
Also, just know that you can find me on social media at Jo Coatesy, and I am more than happy to respond to any messages about IBS. Um, I am by no means an expert, I don't have any medical background or knowledge, um, but I can tell you from my experience of having IBS for, I don't know, 13 years or something, um, kind of what I do, how I've gone about things, and, and know that you are never alone. You know, you got me. Thanks guys, and I will see you later. Say hi, this is Lily.